So thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers uh, for inviting me and for doing this uh, great job in this very difficult time. So last year I was prepared to come to Michigan. I had already for tickets. Uh, fortunately, Lufthansa returned me for money for, for tickets. Okay, um, let me start. Uh, I, I choose the, the title from parallel in time to full space time parallelism. Full space time, I mean really unstructured, not time slices, nothing, unstructured space time grids, unstructured discretization of a space time cylinder. So let me start. Okay. Uh, so this is a slide with all my co collaborators, uh, PhD students and postdocs, and from Graz, Olaf Steinbach, and uh, from Berlin, Freddy Dwelch, and Michael Zang from Vienna. Well, with the outline of my talk, introduction, this is a little bit larger introduction. I will also discuss some parallel time method in this classical setting. When I come to space-time functional formulation, fortunately, we had already talks uh, on this topic. Then space-time finite element analysis. When I come to optimal control problem, and fortunately, we had already a lecture on optimal control problem that makes my life easier. And finally, conclusion outlook. So introduction. So we, uh, I'm going to, to consider first and and an simple. Uh, parabolic initial boundary value problem like this. So you can think about the heat conduction, diffusion, or potential equation. I think uh, last uh, electrical machine was a 2D uh, version of uh, the current problem when we have a parabolic problem like this. So, and the classical approach is the line frictional formulation and then the vertical method of lines discretize first in space, then in time, or first, in time, that is made better if you want to apply adaptivity in space and then space, adaptive final element method in space, or time slices, so time DPG, uh, time DG or uh, DPG methods. We are so everything here already. And always you end up with a system of equation of this form. Mm -hmm. um, there A is a is for discretization in space or in the time slab or on time slice. Huh? And uh, in the simplest thing you can, uh, you can think about implicit Euler. Huh? When you have here the mass matrix, the stiffness matrix, the time step. Um, and of course, this can be uh, solved by time stepping or time matching algorithms as this is uh, written here down. Or as a verse, you start with this time marching when you generate the new time step, the new matrix, when you can forget the matrix. Huh? And finally, we have this matrix. We have maybe not uh, in the very beginning this matrix. But uh, this approach, this time marching, time stepping approach is sequential. Huh? So what you want, you want to solve all at once in some sense. And of course, we heard about bar real and other methods. And uh, I always refer to the paper by, overview paper by Martin Gandel on 50 years time parallel methods. So I, I will look a little bit in the uh, parallel in time, multigrid and fast type analyzation that we see all also in the optimization problem. And um, so here are some references and I uh, will, uh, Look to uh, our space time uh, multi grid methods for <laughs> that was developed for IGA, where we have a time DG with patches and a DG method in time. Mm -hmm. And then we developed the following multi grid solver, time parallel multi grid solver. And the analysis goes back to the paper by the work by Martin Gander and Martin Neumüller. Uh, on how to, to, to set up such a method. So you, what you need, you need uh, the smoother, you need uh, prolongation and restriction, okay? And you need a strategy, the course in space and time in a smart way. So this was done by Fourier analysis in, in this paper by Martin Gardner and Neumüller. 
The smoother uh, is now a block here, could be smoother, where you see on the blocks the AIs. This is a basically a space stiffness matrix. So you have to solve such systems, and of course, you replace this should be cheap. Uh, the smoother you replace this by a parallel multigrid method in space, by a parallel recycle, for instance. And if you do this, then you can design a, a, a solver that works for, for a large number of processes, for instance. So these are the results, the overall degree of freedom is up to 10 billion. Uh, these are the processors for, um, for the space and for the time, CX and CT. And the sum is, uh, is, the, is the number of uh, all cores you, you, you use at the end of the day. And uh, this is the number of iteration and this is the time. So you can solve uh, such a problem in 211 seconds. And if you nest the iteration, what you should do in this way, then it's a few seconds you can do this. So this works. And now I come to another, to another technique that was used uh, in, in this talk on optimal control. Um, namely, if uh, the fast diagonalization uh, technique that was uh, also used for IGA by Sangali and his colleagues. Um, so let us, let us assume the following Farishnal formulation. So we use um, special Farishnal formulation in a non-standard space in the H1, one half. So for Cartians on L2, the time derivative is in H one half. This is, I think you did not see until now. But this was already introduced by Lyons in his uh, classical books. And then we add here, uh, or better, uh, Olaf Steinbach and, and Zank add here a Hilbert transformation. It's a test function, so special test function. And uh, this maps uh, this space where you have zero initial condition with a zero final condition to the space where you have zero initial condition, vice versa. So, then you can do a sortability analysis and error analysis for finite element approximation in space and time. So we use here a tensor product setup. So uh, as simplicial elements are linear for simplicity, but this can be polynomials of a degree P and also linear in T, it can be polynomials of a degree P. And then you use Galerkin's method. And then your bilinear form, by the way, is elliptic. Mm -hmm. So then it's very easy to derive uh, the error estimates. So this is in, in this uh, paper. And uh, we were interested in solving. So we, we want to solve the system of equation. KH is the system matrix coming from the bilinear form. So uh, we apply KH minus one to F. And if you look to this, we have a tensor product structure again. The Hilbert transform only X on T. So this is the matrix coming from the time derivatives. Here, this is duality product, uh, and this is a mess matrix always uh, in time. And this uh, A H X is the matrix coming from this uh, elliptic term, and this is a mess matrix. And then you see the following: you have to invert this one, and if you use an eigenvalue decomposition, so we saw this already, then you can. Uh, Diagonal lies this. You can diagonal lies this. And in addition, you have to use a an, singular an value decomposition of a matrix of a vectors in order to stay stable. So if you do this, you have the following algorithm. You solve uh, small eigenvalue problems in T, small with respect to space. You make this singular value decomposition. When you comp compute first this vector, apply the F. Well, you can compute this vector. Then you solve, this means you have a block diagonal matrix with a space problems with the eigenvalues here. Then you solve this problems completely in parallel with the main work. And then you uh, transform this uh, back by this matrix using the singular value decomposition. So, and this gives you this complexity and T alpha number of degrees of freedom in T and an X in, in X. 
So and here we use a sparse direct solver. This is our example that I will want to show. This is MUMS, um, a sparse direct solver. So we use a PC uh, with two uh, Intel Xeon processors. In some, we have 24 cores, and in this uh, four, um, in this one, there you have a four cycle. You use a uh, bar four as, as command. It's a simple, simple thing. And then you can solve this as L shape, as 2D in, in space here, and uh, linear triangular elements, and also linear elements in time. And you can go to more than 800 million unknowns, and you can do this in, 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 in one minute or so on a PC. So we have this in this publication, in this, in this publication. Okay, in this talk, I will go to unstructured uh, space-time method. That means T is just enough of variable. And the time alternative is a convection in time. Hmm? You can have also convection in space, but then you can have a convection in time. So it's a, just enough of volume, say X T plus one. So here you see a uh, finite element. Uh, I will come back to this, these two uh, uh, figures. And this is IGA. I will not speak about IGA. This is a moving domain, by the way. So uh, I went uh, to, to decide this uh, review paper on the space time methods, also full space time methods by uh, Olaf Steinbach and Hui Dong Yang. Or uh, until 2019, at, at, uh, at least. Uh, so this comes out from a, a space time special semester at Riker. So here you see reference, classical references on space time methods uh, with slabs or slides. And now I have a lot of names, so I cannot add far from names because now this. This area of research is exploding, I think. It's a very hot topic, and we have a, a lot of uh, interesting publication. I have no time to discuss this. I refer to overview paper, but there are new results. And uh, I was very excited by the talks yesterday by, by Johannes and by Jan and by Ben about, uh, uh, about different approaches. Especially, I, I, I think the, the approach that were, uh, presented by Jan, this is a, in the dual norm for residual minimization and the dual norm and using a uh, placing this by a preconditioner is, is very nice and then use it in connection with wavelets and time, finite elements in space. But again, you separate uh, this. Pros and cons of space-time methods, of course, pros parallelization. Huh? We use elliptic methods for the parallelization, that is for distributing uh, our space, our discretization in the space-time cylinder. Adaptivity, we can do simultaneously in space and time. Moving interface, interfaces and domains are fixed in space and time. And this is the good news, are fixed, huh? nothing moving. Optimization problems, we have a KKT system. Forward in time, backward in time. Uh, so this is uh, a good application example. SPDs are possible, are interesting. Data in simulation is interesting. Of course, there are many cons. One, one con is memory. Huh? In time integrating, in time marching, we generate the matrices in space and then forgot. Generate the new one and then forgot. Huh? So here you need. Uh, they will think all together. So space-time variational formulation, a little bit theory, uh, but I can benefit from, from, from what was already presented. So here I add to the parabolic equation this term. This, by the way, appears in the electrical machine if you have permanent magnets. When it's for magnetization, and this generates you a distribution. So if I have only L2, then it's fine. But if you have uh, this one, then we have to think a little bit. So the standard functional formulation we already saw in, in the Bochner spaces, um, this is the famous space W0T from Lyons. So we already saw the space in, in Bayern. 
Uh, we include here for boundary conditions. So we, can, we cannot include as an operator, but we use an extension from the initial conditions here. This is one possibility. And then uh, you have a usual uh, bilinear form, the usual linear form. So you have a functional problem like this. Um, of course, here you have a duality product. If I write integral and it's clear, this is a duality product. I do not speak about this. So uh, the norm in X is uh, the norm in Y. Y is a, the, 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 the usual space here. Uh, I have to find Y here, the S space, plus uh, the norm of a time derivative in the dual. Uh, and this dual norm can be represented by the least representation solving such a problem. Okay. The solvability, you can do it by, by Netscher's Babushka as this. You need indeed three conditions. So you need boundness, this is easy. You need the famous in subcondition and you need injectivity of uh, A star, then this operator is an isomorphism, if and only if. So, uh, then you need a discrete uh, version of uh, uh, in subcondition. Then here you need basically only for in subcondition uh, in order to have existent unitness and discretization. So we use here a subspace of X here. Uh, that means um, Olaf Steinbach was using this. So I will look at another functional formulation in anisotropic Sobolev spaces, not H1, H1 one half, but H1 zero, but with death function then in another space, H1, using integration by parts. And this was introduced in, by the Russian mathematician in Leningrad at that time. So for instance, by the addition scale. This is another version of formulation. So you include also the boundary of the initial conditions. And there are old results by the addition sky of existence and uniqueness. And in fact, they, she showed that there is an inbuilt regularity. So this uh, solution is not only in this uh, space H10, but in this one. And this one means basically this is the W0T that uh, the L2 norm of the solution is uh, in space is continuous in T. And then you have this identity that will I use later. Then the solution solves this identity. So then I come to a topic that is called maximal parabolic regularity. And I will start to construct my schemes or our schemes on this basis. So already Laditian sky observed that um, that the solution is uh, in this space. So the time derivatives and the Laplacian, the Laplacian is for, was for the coefficient uh, nu is equal to zero when the elliptic operator is Laplacian, is an L2. And later on, Leong's uh, posed this question under which condition imposed on the coefficients, for instance, uh, we have this result. And this uh, had a long discussion now, and this was solved only recently, exact conditions imposed on, on the coefficient by Deere in 2015, namely for almost all X, T must be of bounded variation in T. Then we have also maximal parabolic regularity. If you have maximal parabolic regularity, then you can write the BDE in L2 in some strong sense. Does not mean that the second order derivative exists, but in some strong sense. And if you want to construct and stabilize scheme, then you must have this as a starting point. So we did this for this setting, but now I come back to um, the setting that have uh, this distribution on the right hand side. Of course, then you will not have maximal parabolic regularity. So this again comes from uh, electrical motors, and this is rotating. So this is the cross section, duty. And this is the space time series. Not for motor, this is space time series with a rotating machine. Okay, then you cannot expect maximal parabolic regularity. But what you can expect, you know that your magnets, for instance, here rotating, these are this one, and these are subdomains in the space time series. 
So you can say, okay, I have a decomposition of my space time cylinder such that the magnetization is an H diff locally. Locally, if you have this, then you take a test function, a test function that has a support in a QI in this local in this local subdomain. So you have a domain decomposition. Mm -hmm. And if you take this, then you easily see that you have uh, that the equation is valid in the subdomain in L2, but with a, with a space time division. So you cannot separate the space division from the time term in the space time division. And we have this flux identity. Okay. And this is now a starting point for constructing an upwind scheme. So indeed, we take taking a conforming finite element space, D0, from the rule space time cylinder. So we decompose the space time cylinder in the in 3D in the pentatopes, in the simplicial elements. So of course, uh, the decomposition should be aligned with the subdomains. There you have different material that can go to the space through the space time cylinder. And then we multiply this equation by an upwind function. So we, you use an SP, uh, SPOG stabilization or uh, an upwind stabilization in time direction. When we integrate uh, over K, over each element, then we make integration by parts in the element. And then we sum up and use this flux relation. And then we coming up with this T, that this must be consistent because we started. The solution. Then you have a consistent scheme, and then you have uh, this additional term here mm -hmm. with uh, space time divergence of this flux that continue, will continue sigma as a coefficient u, corresponding to the time table, mm -hmm. and the corresponding right hand side, the, the, the linear form, bilinear form, linear form. Okay. So, uh, okay, now you have a consistency. Relation, you can look for a solution uh, in the finite element space, following this for all test functions from the finite element space. This is Galil in fact. It's the same binary. And now the next steps are for following. You show uh, ellipticity of a boundary in our form, so coercivity or ellipticity better on the finite element space, and boundness on the finite element space and the test function, but on the space that is extended by the solution space. We need the solution space. Uh, this is the space containing all these uh, space time dimensions. Mm -hmm. And this can be done uh, if your scaling parameter is sufficiently small, and this is a constant coming from the inverse inequality that we compute by local eigenvalue. So, okay. If you have this, if you have coercivity or electricity, when you have new uniqueness and the existence of your finite element scheme, the causes are it's finite dimensional for all the arguments. The matrix you have to generate is non symmetric, of course, but positive definite. Okay, when it's easy to get such an estimate in this uh, norm where uh, you have a scaling factor for the time derivatives. Oh. So a uh, best approximation norm, and this is with the extended, uh, on the extended space for norm. Okay, so this is a two line proof. And then you can look at the case where you have a smooth solution. So if the solution is in HK, K is larger than D plus one over two, then you can use a Lacanche interpolator because the function is continuous. And then you get local, estimates. That's good. If not, if you have low regularity solution, H1 plus something, plus something, then you have to, 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 to take a quasi interpolator and you get Scott Sang, for instance, and you get uh, here the neighborhood of element, the element neighborhood of element. Okay, these are a priori estimates. A posteriori we use here uh, a functional estimate from Rebin that was derived by Rebin, uh, where you, uh, you will get this estimate for every approximation in the space. We use our final element approximation, and then we need a flux. We cannot take the Kratin 
because this is not an H div. So we need a flux reconstruction that can be done locally, or you can even make some iteration on this right hand side. And then you take as indicator the first one because this is then smaller. Or for a residual based indicator, you will also see uh, this is the usual what you expect from residual, but from this, we have no proof of there's no proof of real, even of reliability for completely unstructured mesh. If you have structure, then it's another story. So then you have uh, marking strategies as usual, um, uh, maximum marking or Dorfler marking. We use always Dorfler marking. I will not explain this. I think you know this. This is textbook. And then I show you some numerical examples. So the space time method was implemented by uh, Andreas Schaffelner in MFAM. And I have to thank Livermore because uh, uh, the labs hosted Andreas Schaffelner twice. And it was playing the game, but this was not possible due to Corona. Um, the linear systems, the big linear systems are solved by GMRES or flexible GMRES, preconditioned by one AMG V cycle. We stop with 10 minus 8. Here, no nested iteration. One should use nested iteration, but we want to study the behavior. Mesh generator is from Joachim, Netgen in 3D, and from Karapilas Neumiller in 4D. Pentatropes, mesh refinement standard or bisection. And for test here, they are performed on Radon 1. This is a local uh, distributed memory. So, a smooth solution here, science. Mm -hmm. And of course, we recover uh, the full the full rates with uniform with uniform refinement uh, in two D and in three D. Um, uh, this is no problem. Uh, here you see the strong scaling. So this is a the strong scaling alpha of three D. That means forty. The space time cylinder is forty, but I cannot throw a forty cylinder. This is uh, the two D case. Uh, so if a time space time cylinder is 40 and we use methods to decompose, like an elliptic case, to decompose uh, the uh, tetraedral mesh or on 40, the pentaton mesh. So and then you see uh, we have a, a good strong scaling for this number of unknowns for P is equal to one, two, and three P is here, always the polynomial degree. And only if you reach uh, small problems if you have too many processors, then the problems are too small on one processor. A processor, I think 15,000 degrees is too small. But if you higher order, have higher order, then it's fine. So second is the moving peak example. This is some practical background as I will show you. So yes, a moving peak in 2D looks like this, or in 3D now I cut with the time, looks like this. So the function is given. This is a 2D computation, uh, computation P is equal to one. So you see that the meshes are adapted to this. This is the space time cylinder. Uh, and here you see the rates. So this is a smooth solution, but with steep gradients. So you can benefit always uh, if you have this, say, uh, green, then it's uniform, and then it's adaptive. Uh, uniform adaptive. So you always get the optimal rates. So these are the um, efficiency index uh, for the functional and for residual. For a functional, you see you are around one. For the residual, only for P is equal to one, we get good efficiency indices, but for P is equal to two and three is, is not so, so nice and it's uh, heavily depending on P. This are the three D results. So cuts. So if you in three D the space time cylinder is forty. If you cut in T, you have a three D uh, domain, and you see here for meshes. So for different times. So again, the same picture. So I will not discuss it uh, here heavily. So I have a bit of time. Uh, Efficiency in, in indices, the same pictures, even up to P is equal to five. So now I come to a more 
uh, more real problem, so applicate from application, this is a simplified model for additive manufacturing. And this is taken from the paper uh, from this people from Barnia. We used uh, implicit Euler plus additive uh, isogeometric analysis method. This is a time step for this. So we put this in our machinery. So this is 2D in space. So the space time step is 3D. This is for solution. So this is a source that is moving here. So I show you for our solution. Space time solution is this one if you cut. So we, of course, we do not know the solution. Uh, so we use reference solution with a lot of unknowns here. So P is equal to one and P is equal to two and P is equal to three. And we compare with a reference solution. And again, we, we got a nice, we got the full rate. Uh -huh. Of course, here, I think the reference solution is not good enough. So this is cut through the space-time cylinders, of course, on, on the bottom and the top, you see nice nets, but then you cut through the uh, tetrahedral nets when you see something like this. So efficiency index indices for functional residuals, the same picture again. Now I come to a moving interface. So this is a moving interface. That means the coefficients depend on t. Huh? And so we, we, this means a moving interface. This moves from the right to the, this is 2D, this is 3D. Um, and on 3D, uh, I think one see the cuts, the meshes. So this is 4D, a cut is 3D. And you see the moving if you cut, but it's fixed in the four D space time cylinder. So we have an exact approximation of the interfaces by pentatopes. This looks in the cut like this, but uh, we have full rate. We expect full rate here because we have a, a match of the interface. Uh -huh. And again, we see this full rates. So now I come to an example that is, uh, that is really hard and we cannot make harder. I, I, I do not show for hardest thing. This is the so-called Kellogg interface problem. So you have jumping coefficient uh, um, that can move in D. So we have here an, an only a, a linear behavior in D, but you can, the solution looks like this here, a cut. You have a terrible, terrible singularity. And this singularity, you can move into space time cylinder and you can even build in uh, time singularities. So, and I think one should not use tensor product fix. Mm -hmm. So um, this is very hard. So we did this with, uh, with uh, tetrahedrals. And then, of course, if we use uniform refinement, we get exact the rate. Uh, h to the power zero point zero, this is this one, h to the power zero point one, this corresponds to the regularity of the solution. And if you use additivity, we improved by 0 0.3 for all p's, but not the zero point, but, but not of the power of p. So this is a efficiency rate I will not discuss. In order to get the power of p as here, you must uh, use very, very unisotropic meshes in T because the T is very smooth. So, and for here we use hexahedral meshes. You can do it with um, tetrahedras as, as well because if you have a very small angle, this is not a big problem. You should not have big angles, but it's better to use an, an hexahedral mesh. So, we have this in our TD uh, paper, then you get such meshes. And with these meshes, you get the full rate. So let me finish with the last part. So um, I think I have a little bit of time. Huh? So this is optimal control. And you already saw this problem for parabolic and hyperbolic problem. I only discuss here um, uh, parabolic problems. So we have here the usual <coughs> L2 regularization. And here you we have uh, parabolic equation as uh, constraints. I changed my notation. Now, y is the state equation and u is uh, for control. 
So if you go to optimal control community, you should never use for the state. <laughs> Please, you why? You come is from Russian Upavlenia. So this was developed by the Russian. Uh, U is the control. And this can be uh, also a part. Because in our DD paper, we have here uh, parts, uh, the part of the space time solution to some part of the space time solution. Here I have a full uh, control. So again, we use uh, the spaces that I already discussed huh? function in Y, time derivative in Y star. Um, and the usual functional formulation. Then uh, this problem is equivalent to the uh, reduced optimality system. And we know that this has a, a unique solution. This is uh, via the minimization problem. But I look only to the reduced optimality system. Um, so reduced by the gradient equation. Uh, so I eliminate uh, the control by the joint or the co-state. When you have an, when you look for the state and for the co-state, uh, state is zero on the initial, co-state is zero on the end of a space-time cylinder. This is sigma t, so I have sigma uh, the, the, the side, the, the mantle, and sigma zero initial and sigma t uh, the end. When you have this uh, optimal to solve this optimality system, that we basically already so so. But now in a space-time setting, then you add this two equation and you come up with a, again with a usual formulation as a pi-linear form. I look for y and p and x zero, x t such that this is valid. This original equation is valid for all test functions from y. So and again the same game. We look for the Banach-Necker-Babushka theorem. Or, and we uh, show the in subcondition here and all the three, three uh, uh, conditions. And then we have ex well, postness, existence, and uniqueness. The corresponding operator generated by the bilinear form is ISO. So, very fine. Um, now we, we use a discretization subspaces. Uh, zero means always zero condition at the initial T, zero condition at the top. And when you use a finite element discretization with these spaces, all the same spaces with different, uh, this is Galerian. And for this, there is a problem to you, the, the proof in subcondition. But for the relaxed norm, you can prove this. For the y norm here, you can prove this in subcondition. If you have this, then you have, of course, the corresponding error estimates. Uh, with the best approximation estimate. And this yields always optimal a priori estimates. Also for low regularity solutions. Okay, a posteriori discretization error estimate. Uh, I used this in subcondition in order to derive uh, this a posteriori functional type approximation that is really gives really reliable with a constant here. Uh, estimate. So, and again, uh, uh, you have to reconstruct the fluxes because the gradients are not in the HDF space. So, we did this. Um, then, uh, next step, we want to use our stabilized uh, schemes. So, um, when it's this relatively easy to prove uh, maximal parabolic regularity. Uh, here we, if the coefficients allow this, so maximal parabolic regularity, then you have these equations in L2. And then you again multiply the first equation by this upwind function, this state equation, and the backward co-state, you have an upwind in the other direction, minus, plus and minus, theta is the scaling parameter, and rho h, is here a mesh, mesh density function that is very easy to construct, piecewise linear, for instance, uh, in order to be able to handle local mesh profile. If you do this, so I do not, I have no time to derive the scheme. This is in the papers. If you do this, I uh, will send, I will show you some results. The first result is the following. You have a desired state that is a 
ball or hyper ball. I have here the three D rather than four D hyper ball ball in the four dimensional space time domain. That has a singularity that pops up, expand, and then shrink and disappear. Well, you want to add this. This is this function one. So this is a ball in the hyper uh, in, in the space time cylinder. So in space time cylinder, everything is fixed. In space, this is, of course, a moving, a moving value. Mm -hmm. So uh, we do not know the solution, of course. So what we use, we use the error indicators coming from the a posterior error estimator. And we look like the error indicators uh, goes down if you use this measure age, so the degree of readings to the power of minus one over d plus one, d r and r and d plus one. This is dove minus one over four. And uh, fortunately, we see for this difficult problems, optimal rates again. So these are the pictures. So cuts into four dimensional space time cylinder for t is equal to three, five, seven gives you, of course, three dimensional pictures. And this is uh, parallel computing again, strong scaling. And here you see the number of unknown. I have to go closer. Uh, this is P is equal to uh, I, P was the joint here of the go state. So we have to use K for that is another notation change in the polynomial degree in K is equal to two. So you see uh, here the number of unknowns that we have and then strong scaling the number of processes. It's very nice until you have to, to uh, you have not enough uh, those on the course, course on the processor. And here in case equal to two, you see it is, it is of course better. And if you use more degrees of freedom, you have a perfect strong scaling. So, so this was the last uh, parallel result. Now I go a little bit faster. We have a lot of optim, opti, optimal control problems. Uh, was already mentioned before Kadu. Um, L2 regularization, sparse regularization, you, know, so you can add the L1 term here with a sparsity parameter. Or what we did in our paper, we uh, use this one, H minus one in space, in this space. Mm -hmm. This is my star. Because we know we can have a control in my star. And I expect then a very concentrated control, concentrated on surfaces even, because it can be a distribution. And indeed, uh, so we, we studied this, the optimality system is a little bit another thing. So we need here the least representation of optimal control. This is this W. So if you do this, you have to solve such a system. Here you have a Laplacian bilinear form instead of a two bilinear form. So we can do everything. So we can do uh, again, uh, well postness by, uh, by by Babushka Natchez, uh, Banach Babushka, Banach Natchez Babushka theory. And you can do this in discrete thing with a discrete, but H special um, in subcondition. When you have error estimates like this, and for most important is also for low regularity solution, if U and P is an H one plus S, a little bit regularity, you get optimal error estimates. The this you can find in our xenon paper. Uh, numerical results. So if you use this H minus one regularization, the control is concentrated on, this is again the ball, but in duty now, in duty. The same example, but in duty. So then I can show everything. Then you have a concentrated uh, the control on the circle. So it starts expanding and shrinking. This is a cut. This is the space time cylinder. This is cut. So, um, and here you see the solution. Um, this is for, uh, this is the target. This is in a cut, time step, the, the time cuts. Uh, this is the state, good approximation. This is the adjoint and this is the control. Of course, the adjoint and the control are connected. And you see for the H minus one, the control is concentrated 
on this circle. Mm -hmm. So think about the electrical machine. This is an electrical magnet. And this has a concentration on the sources as a distribution. So here you have a comparison of the regularization. L2, this is diffuse. This is sparse, it's better, but this is faster. This H minus one. So finally, I show you that everything can be done. Uh, there is a model problems with a, with a linear setting. So everything can, can be done with linear, nonlinear PDEs. We use here the Schlegel model, for, for instance, which is such a nonlinearity y to the power of three. This is very interesting, nonlinearity, by the way. You can add box constraints, of course. So if you go to the control community, you should have this. And then for optimality system looks like this. So we have here in the state equation, the nonlinear term. We have here the cut operator from the box constraints and the adjoint, we have a linearized term here. There's a linear, the joint is always linear. Uh, we construct the solution for a special case, by the way. This is also interesting, our benchmark. And then you see an uh, interesting thing. We want a state that is like a wave. We are on power poly case. Normally in a power poly case, you can have like waves. You can have solution like this. So this is such a turning wave due to phenolinearity. And our desired state was this. And the question was, uh, can we control this? Can we, can we have a right-hand side that produces this solution? Yes. So I show you only the control. This is the control and this a joint state is connected. So these are the meshes into space-time cylinder. This is a 2D in space. That means 3D in space-time. So you have really the mesh adoption. So and this is the state and the control that the solution, mesh with the solution, the same but different solution. So here you have a decay of a cost functional and the degree of readings. So this were serial solves, uh, but we did not solve it in parallel. So conclusion and outlook. Conclusion, we have discussed unstructured, that means real unstructured adaptive space-time finite element methods. No time slices, nothing. For solving linear and nonlinear parabolic evolution problems and parabolic optimal control problems, constrained also by nonlinear parabolic without and with time uplink stabilization. Time uplink stabilization are leading to discretization error estimates of different norms, of course, and to different behavior of the solution. Okay. So in my opinion, and this was already mentioned several times, unstructured space-time methods have space-time methods in general, but I think also unstructured space-time methods have a great potential with respect to adaptivity. Simultaneously in space and time, if you have a solution that goes really through the space time solution, parallelization this is easy, like an elliptic case. We use always metis. You know? Treatment of moving interface and domains because they are fixed. You know? And optimal control problem, problems, optimal control problems, but also shape optimization problems. You know? Future challenging research topics are reliable and efficient up as the UV estimates. At spaces for adaptive procedures converging and optimality that's the so-called four axioms and we have con contributions from the, from, from the group by uh, Rob Stevenson parallel robust solvers so we were working on the Vasilevsky Shavala was working on Emily solvers and uh, we had a solver that they solved uh, a system with one billion unknowns in three seconds with four thousand and 90 cores. But unfortunately, we, we cannot continue to so with this research work to do different forms. So, there are challenging applications like electrical machines, and this was mentioned in the preceding talk. And my former PhD students, who is now postdoc with, um, with I, I started with Peter Garner with uh, simulation of electrical machines, but he moved to the, the cards, and he has already a code that can compute such an eddy column problem for electrical machines in the space time cylinder, meshing the rotating electrical machine that is fixed in the space time cylinder. Okay, thank you very much for your Zoom attention.